Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Those of you standing, please uh, take your seat. Well, I'm Randy Dameron with the West Virginia Department of Transportation, and it is indeed a pleasure to welcome you here to the Coonskin Bridge Dedication Ceremony. But uh, this afternoon, it's more than a ribbon cutting. It's a bridge dedication. It is, in fact, a naming of a new drive, and it's a ribbon cutting as well. Three in one. I'd like to ask that you please rise now for the entrance for the official party to the stage. Please remain standing, if you will, for the playing of our national anthem by the 249th Army Band from Morgantown, followed by our invocation by Chaplain Major Jack Miller. If you will, bow your heads with me. Father God, thank you for another day of life, and thank you for this day, the historic day in the life of the West Virginia National Guard. Thank you for the leadership of our elected officials. Thank you for the vision of our generals and our military commanders. And thank you for those who we honor with this bridge, those who we lost in the plane crash so many years ago. Let us remember that we can't dedicate or honor them any more than they have honored themselves in their sacrifice for our country and our state. May we have that same courage, that same dedication going forward from this day. It's in your son's holy name we pray together. Amen. Amen. Very good. Thank you, Chad. Thank you, Major. You may be seated. Well, it's an honor to present to you the Adjutant General for the State of West Virginia. Please welcome Major General James A. Hoyer. Thank you. So, thank you. So today is a day for us to honor and remember, but also to celebrate. In a few moments, we're going to honor and remember those who paid and gave the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. but. First, I want to talk about what we should celebrate and what we, the 6,500 men and women of the West Virginia National Guard, celebrate as a part of today, and that is leadership. Leadership and vision. And if we had as much leadership and vision across the country as we've got in West Virginia to accomplish what we've accomplished here, and stop and think about this, an air base that brings in $89 million of economic impact to the valley and to our state. 670 employees between the two facilities that were both in danger of being lost because of force protection issues. So we had most of our issues addressed. You guys know the history and the hard work put in by General Tackett and 
and others related to BRAC and all those things, but we had this one last item that could have ended the whole thing. So we went to the governor and we said, Governor, we have this issue and we've got to address it. And thanks to the vision and leadership of the governor and our other elected officials, our county commissioners, our legislature, our members of Congress, we're here dedicating a bridge that most people in the Pentagon said we wouldn't get done and we'd probably lose the air base and the headquarters. But we made it happen. And I think that's an important thing for us to remember. And I greatly appreciate, Governor, over the, the years that I've had the opportunity to serve you. I don't think we've had, from a guard perspective, better leadership in helping us get things done and understanding the issues that we've had. And early on in your tenure, you had to make a decision to help make this happen, and you directed the Division of or Department of Transportation, and I want to thank Paul and Harry and the leadership and all the folks in the Department of Transportation under your vision. We've got this bridge. So on this end, we're celebrating the vision of the work of the governor, the legislature, to make those things happen, the vision of General Tackett, and thanks to Speaker Armstead for bringing forward the concept of, of naming the bridge in honor of our members of the 167th. On the other end, we've got a bipartisan effort by our two United States Senators to get the funding, the federal funding secured to build the new front gate. So again, from my perspective, on behalf of the 6,500 men and women of the West Virginia National Guard, we want to thank our leadership in West Virginia for your vision and for your leadership and for what you all have done to make this happen to protect the air base, the headquarters, and make those important things happen so we can continue to serve in this state. Uh, it's my pleasure and honor to introduce uh, an individual who has been an absolute advocate for the National Guard going back to well before he was the governor. And Governor, I've had this conversation during several different disasters, and we were fortunate that we didn't have to deal with another one, but through several different disasters, we've commented about how well the men and women of the West Virginia National Guard perform. There is no other state that responds any better to a crisis or a disaster than this state. And it was in large part in my mind, Governor, due to the fact that you had the vision, along with General Tackett and others, to give us the education opportunities for the men and women of the National Guard. And through that vision, you have created, and I admit I'm a little bit biased, but I believe truly the numbers reflect one of the finest military organizations in the United States of America, and I greatly appreciate your support. Ladies and gentlemen, the governor of the great state of West Virginia, Earl Ray Tomlin. Thank you. Thank you, General Horman, uh, General Hoyer. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> but thank you, General Hoyer, for that uh, very kind introduction and for your continued support of this important project and, uh, <clears throat> and all that you do for the state of West Virginia. And as he says, you know, I'm very proud of what we've been able to do for the men and women of our National Guard and the educational component of it that gives us one of the best educated guards in the entire country. And I think we should just all give a good round of applause right off the top to our, ladies and gentlemen, our National Guard. You know, we gathered together this afternoon to dedicate and officially open the new Coonskin Park Bridge. This project was truly a collaborative effort among federal, state, and local partners. And I'd like to thank everyone involved for working together to determine a solution that works for both the community members and our state's incredibly vital National Guard. I'd also like to give a special thanks to Kanawha County Commissioner and Commission President Kent Carper, a tireless advocate for our National Guard and for all of our emergency responders who helped make this project possible. 
along with his, his two fellow county commissioners, Dave and Hoppy. We certainly appreciate all your help and support. And to the Secretary of the Division of Highways, Paul Maddox, and his team, which was the lead agency on the design and construction of this alter alternate access route. I'd also like to recognize representatives with us from our congressional delegation. I think we have Todd Guther, who is here today on behalf of Senator Shelley Moore Capito. Todd, are you? He's back here in the crowd. And Mara Bogus from Senator Joe Manchin's office. We're very pleased to have both of you here today. Our entire co uh, congressional delegation works hard to support our National Guard and these infrastructure projects, and we thank them so much for their support. It's indeed my pleasure to be here today surrounded by service men and women who protect us every day, as well as our special guests family me and family members of the 1951 C-47 plane crash victims. On behalf of many across the Mountain State, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all and to say thank you to both our current National Guard members and those who have gone before us. We appreciate all that you do. As I've said time and time again, I'm truly honored to be the Commander-in-Chief of the West Virginia National Guard. I believe that we have the best guardsmen and women in the entire country, and I'm proud our state is leading the way in both preparedness and readiness efforts. Our Guard members make every effort to always be prepared and stand ready to help our communities and residents in time of need. So it's also important that we do everything that we can to ensure they are protected as well. Several years ago, it was, as the general mentioned, it was brought to our attention by the U.S. Department of Defense that our 130th Airlift Wing and Army National Guard facilities on Coonskin Drive were at risk of security threats and faced potential closure because of their close proximity to the public roadway and Coonskin Park. We quickly went to work to determine a solution to this problem that would reduce security risks for our troops and preserve easy access to the family-friendly rec recreational activities at Coonskin. Through a multi-agency approach, we were able to do just that with the construction of the new Coonskin Park Bridge. This $6 million project will meet a number of needs. It will reduce the vulnerability the Department of Defense cited at our National Guard base, provide an emergency access route for our troops and local residents, improve access for our visitors traveling to Coonskin Park, and allow for further development of the park and nearby Jaeger Airport. Today's ribbon cutting ceremony officially puts in place these improvements and represents another step forward in our continued commitment and investment in our state's National Guard. Every day we ask our National Guard to stand ready to fight wars and respond to emergencies in West Virginia and abroad and they always do so with honor and courage. That is just one of the many reasons I am working with General Hoyer and his counterparts across the country to ensure that we continue to have access to these invaluable soldiers and equipment. As we all know, the United States Army has proposed force reductions that are not right for our state and not right for our nation. Reducing the number of units in the National Guard would hurt West Virginia and limit our nation's access to some of the most capable military personnel in the entire country. As your governor and commander-in-chief, I take my responsibility to ensure our units are trained and ready, and very, very seriously trained and ready. And I will continue to work closely with General Hoyer and his dedicated team to advocate for appropriate federal resources that ensure our troops can stand ready for whatever task arises. Cuts proposed at the federal level could put those readiness efforts in jeopardy, and I will continue to fight for adequate funding, staffing, and equipment for our National Guard. This federal funding matters to both our state and to the family and friends of those who have dedicated their time and talents to serve. Today, we have a very special group of guests with us, 
the relatives and friends of the airmen who lost their lives in the plane crash near Kanawha Airport in 1951. This event will forever be ingrained in our state's history. And I'm proud to be able to properly honor your loved ones and our state's troops who made the ultimate sacrifice 64 years ago. We're grateful for their service and are honored to have each of you here today. It is my hope that this new bridge and memorial will stand as memories of these 21 dedicated men now and for years to come. Their memories, lives, and stories will never be forgotten. Again, thank you for allowing me to join you today for this very special celebration. And thank you to all those past and present for answering the call to duty and for serving the Mountain State and our country with honor and respect. Thank you. You know, I, my wife and I were on a trip last week. I saw an individual with a shirt that has the saying on it, freedom isn't free. And we kind of take that sometimes as a cliche, but today what I ask us to do is to reflect and honor and remember and understand that even when men and women in uniform are not in combat, they face danger every time they put the uniform on. And today, the first thing I would like us to do, if you would bear with me for a moment, today is the anniversary in 1992, uh, October the 7th at 9.35 a.m., a West Virginia Air National Guard C-130, call sign decoy 81, crashed just outside of Berkeley Springs, West Virginia. We lost several valiant members of the National Guard that day. Lieutenant Colonel Al Steinberger, Captain Dallas Adams, Master Sergeant George Griffith, Tech Sergeant John Funkhauser, Staff Sergeant Tim Hinchman, and Staff Sergeant Fred Jones lost their lives that day on a training mission outside of Berkeley Springs. So I ask if you would, let's please observe a moment of silence for those individuals and their families and the sacrifices that they made in 1992 and during their careers. And today, it's our privilege and our honor to dedicate the bridge that addresses our security issues in honor of those individuals who again, in service of their nation, during training, lost their lives in the service of their nation. I'll unveil in just a moment there, a monument. There's a monument at the top of the hill at the air base in recognition of those 21 individuals and the sacrifice that they and their families made. And what we intend to do is replicate that monument right here behind you all at the foot of the bridge so that everyone that comes through Coonskin Park will understand that freedom is not really free and that a lot of men and women sacrifice on a regular basis to allow us to have the opportunities to enjoy a park like Coonskin Park. In addition, we'll add to this monument the name of the individual that they were actually returning from uh, honoring that individual, Major Wolford W. Jock Sutherland had lost his life in preparation of training for deployment to Korea. And the individuals coming home on the C-47 had been there to honor his service and his sacrifice. So at this time, before I unveil our monument to show you what it will look like and how it will replicate what we have on the hill, I would ask as I read the names of those individuals, if we have family members or friends representing those individuals, if you would please stand and be recognized as I read the names. Staff Sergeant Kenneth C. Amick, Captain Harry K. Blackhurst, 
Major Isaac Boniface, Corporal Charles E. Cobb, Sergeant James E. Creasy, First Lieutenant Drexel Kreitz, Private First Class Jimmy Dolan, First Lieutenant Lyle Finley, First Lieutenant William J. Frank, Corporal Columbus Van Linden Hall, Sergeant Richard F. Hazeltine, First Lieutenant Harry B. Kessler, Private First Class James R. Lewis, Corporal Dennis I. Meeks, First Lieutenant Charles Michelson, Corporal John R. Price, Staff Sergeant David E. Rollison, Jr., Sergeant Winston A. Schoonover, Jr., Tech Sergeant William H. Shelton, First Lieutenant Herman F. Winter, Jr., Captain Edwin K. Whittington. These individuals, again, demonstrated commitment and service to their nation and paid the ultimate price and made the ultimate sacrifice along with their families to ensure the rest of us have the freedoms that we have. So today, we dedicate the bridge and in a couple of months, we will have the monument in place that will honor those individuals, their service and their sacrifice and that of their families. On behalf of the 6,500 current men and women of the West Virginia National Guard, we pay tribute to and thank the families of those service members, our fellow guardsmen from that C-47. God bless you and thank you for the commitment that you and your families have made to our nation and our state. As I mentioned earlier, and the governor mentioned in his comments, this was a team effort. And part of the key part of that team, I call them the three amigos. Uh, been we've been called worse, is that okay? <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, I don't know that you'll find a county commission more dedicated to the men and women of the West Virginia National Guard than the Kanawha County Commission. And I want to personally, again, on behalf of the men and women of the West Virginia National Guard, thank you for your leadership, your commitment, and the teamwork that you created with our governor, our uh, United States senators who made these uh, things happen on the other end, and all of our elected officials. So it's my pleasure to introduce the commissioners from Canal County, the three amigos. <laughs> thank you, Jim. Uh, we have been called a lot worse. Uh, when I sat there and saw the families, uh, the saying that uh, time uh, heals all wounds, that's just not true. And we do honor your family members and honor you. And I think we should all stand up and applaud the families. I really do. Thank you very much. Generally, you, you go down the list and you thank people, and uh, uh, the governor thanked everybody, and General Hoyer thanked everybody else. And what, what who really hasn't uh, really received the recognition they deserve on this is General Hoyer and Governor Tomlin. Uh, I know for a fact that this project would not have gone through if it hadn't been for the leadership of our governor, the 35th governor of the 35th state, the Honorable Earl Ray Tomlin. That is just a fact. <laughs> S 
several years ago when we first started this process, I think it was seven years ago maybe, General, General, I, I had one of my first encounters meeting General Tackett. Uh, for those of you that work for him and know him, he's really a difficult person to say no to. Then along comes General Hoyer, who also thanked everybody. This project would not have been built without the follow-up, dedication, integrity, and leadership of our wonderful Adjutant General. You should all thank him too, please. You know, talking about how, what something cost and who contributed to it, that's all well and good. But when it came right down to it, it took great leadership. And uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, thank you for what you did for naming the bridge. It's the only thing in Kanawha County that's not named after me, but I appreciate it very much. <laughs> I'll get one one of these days. Um, at this time, it is my great privilege my two fellow commissioners here, and Dave, if you want to say something, fine. I know Hoppy does. And then I have the distinct privilege of doing a presentation. And uh, when we get ready to do that, I would uh, invite several people up here. I would also point out that we have uh, Judge Lewis H. Bloom here. And I will tell you one thing, if it hadn't been for Judge Bloom, we wouldn't have a park to dedicate. When the county fell, and, and certainly this man right here, which I'll talk about in a minute. But when the county fell in great financial despair, uh, he got us out of that. And uh, Duke, I don't know where you are, Judge Bloom, but thank you for being here. And Governor, if I can take a personal privilege, will you please communicate to your former Chief of Staff, Rob Alsop. Rob Alsop cut the final deal and uh, with the Governor telling him to do it, but we appreciate the uh, former Chief of Staff, Rob Alsop. And at this time, I'll let my fellow commissioners say something. And then if the Shores family, Bronson, if you can get your brood to move over to this direction right here, all of you, I'd like you to come up here when we do something, if you'll do that. Uh, by the way, that's the first lady of Kanawha County, Bronson Shore, sitting on the front row there. <laughs> Hello, Bronson, how are you? Oh, you're nice, Ken, you're nice. Dave, go ahead. Yes. You're nice. Come on up, Bronson. Well, the old saying goes, I've got pictures, all right? Uh, about 10 years ago, a brash general from Cabin Creek asked us to come up to the airport and discuss the BRAC, the BRAC committee report. And that brash general is sitting right here, Alan Tackett. And I saw something that day that I thought I would never see in my life. I saw a general at the request of Senator Byrd, or he claimed Senator Byrd told him to do this, drop kick the BRAC commission report off the stage. And if you don't believe me, I brought the picture of General Tackett. General, this and the picture of Robert Kennedy are the only two pictures that hang in the Kanawha County Commission courtroom. And now obviously that's how important this was to us. Ten years ago, the BRAC Commission said, why don't we, why don't we close the best guard base in the United States of America? And General Tackett kicked off the campaign by kicking that report off the stage. And right behind him came Senator Byrd, and I have a feeling Senator Byrd's here somewhere with us, I just don't know where. Senator Rockefeller, Congresswoman Capito, Governor Manchin, Governor Tomlin, General Hoyer, our state legislators, including Speaker Tim Armstead, our airport board, which is here today, our Parks and Rec board which is here today, and the three amigos, our county commission, and of course our guard members. And we all decided after General Tackett kicked off the BRAC report that we were gonna join together and we were going to make this guard base remain here in Charleston, West Virginia. And this bridge out here today, after eight to 10 years, is symbolic of that effort. And General Tackett, you kicked off the ball and everybody followed you down the field. So thank you so much for doing that. And I want to thank you and ask that everyone give you a round of applause. Now I have the fun of talking about Hoppy Shores. 
Now, it is impossible to say the name Hoppy Shores and people not smile. When I said his name just then, everybody smiled, including General McLaughlin down here. Uh, the most well-known person in Kanawha County, bar none, is not Kent Carper, it's not Dave Hardy, it's not the governor, it's Hoppy Shores. Hoppy Shores is the most well-known person in Kanawha County. If you don't believe me, walk around this county for five minutes and someone will ask you about Hoppy Shores. That's the most common question I'm asked as a county commissioner, is how's Hoppy Shores? Now, with respect to Hoppy Shores, why wouldn't he be well known? He won the Kennedy Award at Stonewall Jackson High School when he was in high school, of course, in 1949. And I tease him about that all the time. He was undefeated, undefeated as a sprinter at WVU, never lost a race as a sprinter. He served in the U.S. Army. He had a successful business career. He's been on our commission 36 plus years, and I'm positive that he will be there long after Kent Carper and I are gone. No question about it. And to say his name is legendary is an understatement. But let me say this about Hoppy. He doesn't talk about this much. Hoppy didn't have an easy time growing up. And because of that, he never forgot, and to this day has never forgot, what it means when someone is willing to reach out and help a young person. You mention a young person to Hoppy Shores, and you're going to see a smile, and you're going to see a support. I've never mentioned any project to Hoppy involving young people that he didn't immediately embrace the project and say, what can I do to help? He never forgot all the coaches, Boy Scout leaders, and people that helped him when he was a young boy growing up on the west side of Charleston. And Hoppy, needless to say, we love you. And I'll leave you with this, Hoppy. Uh, uh, when, when I want to make your eyes light up, five words come to mind when I think of you, all right? One word is humble. Hoppy's one of the most humble people I've ever met. It's hard to get him to talk about his accomplishments. I have to extract them out of him. Another one is optimistic. I've never seen Hoppy that he didn't smile. 24-7, 365. The next word, persistent. When Hoppy wants something for the Parks Commission or he wants something for the airport, he has this gentle way of just reminding you over and over that he wants that. Like he wanted our tennis courts resurfaced like he wanted the road resurfaced here at Coonskin. And that goes with the next word, and that's persuasive. Hoppy knows how to ask without asking. And I've sat beside him on that commission for 14 and a half years, and I've never told him no on anything he's asked for. And last but not least, youthful. He's the most youthful guy that I think I've ever met in my life. So if you add up H-O-P-P-Y, you get Hoppy. And when I think of Hoppy Shores, those are the five words I think of. So Hoppy, Bronston, Hoppy Jr., Scott, Sherry, Lynn, you got a great dad, you know that, and a great husband. And thank you for allowing me to be here today, Hoppy, and I cannot wait for us to name this road out here after you. I can't think of a, morning tri a more fitting tribute than that. So God bless you and God bless your family, and thank you for allowing me to serve with you. It's been wonderful. It's hard to talk. I'm really not that good. I don't know why, <laughs> but I'm not what he said I was. <laughs> I just wanted to thank you people. I love all of you. And it's hard for me to talk, but I love all of you. I love this park. I love my, my people here. And I got the greatest family in the world, and I wouldn't be here today, I don't think, if it wasn't for my wife. She kept me straight. She kept me so straight. I, it, it, it's hard to keep a crooked uh, person straight, but she's kept me straight. And Dave, I, and Kent, it was such a nice, I don't know how to thank you. And I hope to God that this, uh, that this, um, 
park here will continue, and I love the park, and, and I think all of us ought to enjoy it, and, and I love the people of, of Kanawha County, and, and I love the people that, that supported me and all the votes that I have. I don't think I deserve all those votes, but I want to thank each and every one of you, and God bless you, and let's keep th this county going, and let's keep being successful, and, and let's make this park the best park in the world. Thank you. Other than the governor, perhaps General Mack, uh, that's the only time I see people stand up when someone speaks. And Hoppy may not say a lot, but he means what he says and he does what he says. I lost my father about a year ago, and there's really no one that can replace your father, but uh, Hoppy's about as close as it gets. I truly love him. I love his family, and this is a very small, very small opportunity to recognize a lifetime, a lifetime of dedication to the people of this county who he serves and he serves so well, but he loves the kids. When he says, I love the kids, he's not kidding. So at this time, if we can have a little bit of help from the governor, please, and the general, generals. Um, we have a small presentation right over here. Hoppy, we're gonna need your Bronson. I really wanted you back up here. <laughs> Come on, we'll wait on you, please. this time if uh, the governor would be if he's done smooching around with Bronson <laughs> which you know what not a bad gig uh, governor if you would lead the uh, honor delegation and unveil uh, the sign which recognizes a lifetime achievement of our county commissioner Henry C Clay Hoppy Shores And Hoppy, good news, uh, it's not considered a trinket. Uh, the, uh, the governor has authorized Secretary Paul Maddox, who also made this day possible, that sign belongs to you. Okay? Thank you. I got to tell you one quick story because the commissioner's picture reminded me of a story uh, I need to tell about our next speaker. You know, at, we all know General Tackett's a pretty persistent guy. He also likes to joke a lot and he likes to keep things, you know, keep poking at you a lot. And I spent most of my career with General Tackett and he'd like to jab at me and one day he made the mistake of saying something and those boots reminded me we used to have to polish our boots. One day we were on the way back from a trip and he was joking around and he said, yeah, Jim, I'm gonna go home and have Sally Pat sign my, shine my boots. <laughs> so the next time he started picking at me on about something, I said, hey, sir, would you like me to call Sally Pat and ask her if she's gonna shine your boots tonight? And he never said another word to me ever again. <laughs> so uh, it's my honor and privilege to introduce our uh, final speaker. Uh, I've had the honor and privilege of uh, serving with him, working for him, but most importantly, I've had the honor and privilege of calling him friend and mentor. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, he needs no further introduction, General Alan Tackett.
Thank you very much. What a, what a great day for Kanoa County in the state of West Virginia. Uh, you know, uh, this bridge opens up Coonskin Park, brings in the traffic off of the uh, interstate half a mile from Mink Shoals exit, then you can come into the park. And you, came in, you come in to the main part of the park, uh, the swimming pool, the clubhouse, the golf, the soccer field, everything is right there. Before Coonskin Drive, you drove through all the picnic areas where children were playing and it was a dangerous situation for kids and to get uh, to the main part of the park. So everything's reversed. Now the picnic areas where children play will be a lot safer because there'll be a lot less traffic and a lot less people traveling those highways. So everything about this bridge is great for Coonskin Park. And at this time, I would like to ask the park commissioners, and they're on the front bench here, if you would please stand up, be recognized. You too, Lucy, you were there a part of it, honey. Thank you. You know, I want to personally thank the members of the Kanoa County Park Commission for supporting me in this effort to get this bridge built. And without them, I don't think I could have ever gotten it done. So thank you all very much, and uh, I appreciate your continued support of the park and what you do every day for this park. Thank you very much. Now I want to turn to the county commission and Kent Carper. You know, you have to have good partners to get anything done, and I could not have asked for better partners uh, for going to the governor and helping pay for the bridge and Jim Hoyer and Governor Tomlin. Uh, governor Tomlin recognized and seen the importance of getting rid of the security issues at the air base. Uh, it was extremely important. Uh, to me, it was the actual last project that I worked with Senator Byrd. He had federal dollars in the, his last budget to build this bridge and to put the uh, security checkpoints and stuff up at the air base. But unfortunately, when he died, that budget died with him. And the Air Force just strictly said they were not going to build a bridge. Uh, they were only going to build a bridge because Senator Byrd told them they were going to. <laughs> and when Senator Byrd died, they pulled it out of the fire depth and it was never to be put there again. They had never built a bridge ever in the history of the Air Force. They hadn't built a bridge in the state. And they, their comments was, who takes care of it? Who's responsible for it? And everything you could think of to keep it from happening. But I told them, it's a mitigation project. We're shutting down a road to the park. We have to have a way into the park, and it's a mitigation project. Senator Byrd realized and knew, and he in turn had it there. But unfortunately, when he died, this would have never happened without Governor Tomlin, and the Kanoa County Commission. And also, is there, I see the airport director. Is there any airport members here? If the airport board and the airport people are here, please stand up and be recognized. Come on, Terry, I see you there. Okay. You know, Hoppy and I have the distinction of being on both the, the park board and the airport authority. And uh, Governor, now that we've got this project finished <laughs> and dedicated, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about another project <laughs> that's probably as important to the state of West Virginia as any project we've ever had. And Tim, it's a good, good thing you're here too. <laughs> you know, the EMAS saved 34 lives. That EMAS was put there for safety reasons for Kanoa County Airport, and at one point it saved 34 lives. It's extremely important that it be rebuilt and be put back because this is the gateway to the state of West Virginia. And quite frankly, Governor, there's no way that the County Commission, the City of Charleston, can do this. This is going to have to be a statewide project. And I'm sure you're aware of that. 
And I know everybody tries to raid the rainy day fund, but that rainy day fund was put there for emergency uses for things that are beyond the control of people to do. The people at the airport couldn't cause or keep that slide from happening, but it's up to the state of West Virginia and our elected officials to take it on their own to make sure that we build that airport back so that the gateway to the state of West Virginia is open and the state of West Virginia is ready for business and that we maintain the 130th airlift wing forever right here in the great state of West Virginia. Thank you all for being here and we'll have the ribbon cutting ceremony shortly. Wow. My name is Alan Tyker. Yeah. Yeah. message, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Well, today, uh, we'll go down in history as a special day for our National Guard, the Kanawha County Commissioner Hoppy Shores, the C-47 Memorial Crash Victims, and Coonskin Park. Now, today, you entered the park for the very last time through the main gate. You are the last folks to come into the park on the main gate, which by the way, has been in existence since 1951 when the park opened. And you, oh by the way, the park is closed now. You can't get in the front gate, nor can you get out the new bridge. You will be the first to exit Coonskin Park today through the new park entrance on Hoppy Sea Shores Drive. While you receded this road, tonight this road was renamed this afternoon. Now, the official party is going to move for the ribbon cutting, but folks, this is not your normal uh, scissor ribbon cutting. The official party will be boarding, and many of you know this, you've seen it in action, the Hoppy Express train. <laughs> it's a rubber tire, don't worry, it's a rubber, we didn't put tracks on the road, it's a rubber tire train. And they'll drive through the ribbon, allowing, by the way, for an excellent photo opportunity. And of course, that will conclude our ceremony, but you're invited to the Coonskin Clubhouse for a reception immediately following the ribbon, uh, uh, ribbon drive-through, that's it. Piercing. Piercing, thank you, Kent. Thank you for attending. Have a wonderful day and God bless you.